Red Bib Bill here. We finally got just about all the modifications, the design changes on the plow from the last video I said I was going to do. Right in here, we replaced the, I uh, was having trouble with the line of draft, plus having trouble with this corner of the plow stand down. I had it chained on the tractor. I had to change all that, and I'll show you the rest of it here in a second. There was a box channel here. Took it out and replaced it with a four by six tubing. Yes, sir. And it had, we made it longer because my line of draft wasn't correct. I made this about eight inches horizontally this way longer. This tube had to be about 13 inches longer to make it. Got that done, and that solved the line of draft issue. And then when we uh, said a corner wouldn't go down, so we found out the best way to do this is with weights. Found out that 500 pounds on this corner would hold it down, so it would hold it down, but to hold it down good is about 800 pounds. So I'm gonna be putting 800 pounds. I got places right here. You can take a look. I got places right here for, for 1,200 pound weights if I want to. This is a weight box. I had this had made, made in a machine shop in town. It was just straight when I got it, man, but they had cut the holes in it in a, a, a plasma cutting machine. And then we got here, me and my welder, we bent all this and, uh, and shaped it into here. We designed that because this here was too close over here for these to get them in and out. So we come up with this idea here. This is part of a, a 90 degree bend out of a 420 International um, spreader bar yeah. on a spreader bar. And then we put the support in there. I think that turned out looking sharp. And I think the whole thing. Uh, so now you moved it over, would you say eight inches? Or out? Horizontally. Horizontal. Horizontally, this moved over eight inches. On the, on the other, we used this over again. It was sitting back here, right here on the old bar. And this, we moved it up this far and over here and then welded it right back into here. Yeah. And that, uh, that this is about 13 inches longer overall, but this is on an angle, so it gave us about eight inches here. And that's about as far as I can go right there. But it also gave me a line of draft. Goes back to that plow and goes right through to, to this, this tractor drawbar hitch up, up underneath the tractor. And that's, yeah. that's where you want it. So that's going to put that out like you wanted it. And it's going to also give me, before you notice in the uh, part six, I just was off the tire, just was off the fur fall. Now my tire is going to be somewhere, the edge of my outside of my tire is going to be here, which gives me plenty of room. Yeah. That was one of the reasons for moving it over to. The rebuild the hitch, three reasons. Uh, this tire was too, the track tire was too close to the furrow. Get me a better line of draft. And I had weights on this corner before I had a chain down on the hitch. And this is just, this is going to work a lot better. And the other thing, if you happen to you see the pink ribbon I got tied on everything, that's my reminder system. <laughs> I, I'll forget, I can't remember everything, but when I come on to something, I don't want to fix it right then, I just put a ribbon on it, like this right here. This little jack stand here, that all this weight's going to be, I thought it was kind of a lot of weight for that one little thing. So I'm going to take this, weld it on right here, then we're going to take this 2 by 2 tube and slip down the side of it. Yeah. Give it support. And that's pretty much it for up front, that chain. You know, back here, of course, I had the toolbox up there. I had to move the toolbox, so it's the toolbox right here. That's a toolbox off of 1206. And back here, what was happening, of course, they had to change this rear furrow wheel. If you come right here, let me show you these three lines. That, this is your furrow wall right here. That's where it was running up on top of the land. You saw that in part six. So I got it moved over. This this is off the of International 700 plow. I doubt we, we worked this and got it over to where it's about two and a half inches approximately off the furrow wall over here. And that's a good place to run right there. That'll, that, that'll put this right down in the furrow and it won't be running up on the land anymore. And we worked on that today and got all this done. This is completely finished. and. I reckon I can show you a little bit right here. Show you a little bit of action. Yeah, cause <clears throat> that thing was kicking over pretty. It was, oh, kicking, oh, yeah. it was trying to lift the plow out of the back of the ground. No, it won't lift in the plow. Or uh-uh. But here's here's why it won't lift in the plow. The, plow, the weight of the plow was on the gauge wheel. Yeah. This thing, see here, when it's hooked to that. And it's up like this, it's moving. It don't pick up till it hits that right there. Yeah. And this thing is really retracted. And so it was open like that. But it won't pick, it was not picking the plow up in that. Now 
And I can show you going up and down a little bit. We got the, so we haven't been long finished working on this today. We, we called it quits for today. We got to put some gussets in here and on this side here. And then we got to put the, uh, the, um, the bell crank in there. Probably take, see, take one of these, cut it off of there and, and probably put it, put it on the top of here. But we'll have to work out where that has to go. But anyway, that's uh, made a lot of progress. Uh, I'm well pleased with it, and I think uh, things are going to be fine. Yeah, oh yeah. I don't really have anything <coughs> to tell you about it. So we got, I imagine right now, best I can, it's anyway, as far as the welding and burning and all this thing right now, what we got to do metal work. We've got a few odds and ends up to take care of up there. Uh, I'd say anyway, from two to four hours is about to be finished with everything. Then you're going to start disassembling it. And, and I, want to, I want to uh, check it out plowing. But, but look out the door and that's what I got to deal with right now. So I don't think, I think I'm okay. I want to get to a plow day in Gates County, I'll call them, uh, March 16th. And it's still a lot of work doing this thing, even with the metal work done, uh, just cleaning it up and painting it. And I think the minute we get the metal work done, I'm just gonna go ahead and start, uh, cause I disassembled the whole plow, every last nut and bolt and tap and dollar bolt and paint them. And then I paint each individual individual piece, I sandblast it, paint each individual piece, and I put it back together, <clears throat> and then I'll give everything a final coat, one more coat over top of it. And that seems to, to last me pretty good. Now, all I use is IH2150 paint with some hardener in it. And I have real good luck the main, with it, and it's uh, main thing is keep them out of the sun as much as you can. When I, I get them in the sun, of course, when I plow with them, but when I store them, they're under, they're under a shed and keep the, cut that out. Yeah, I mean, any paint is going to fade, but when you use that magic stuff from Tractor Supply or something, that stuff will fade in about two months. That paint <laughs> that you get from Tractor Supply, I saw a guy painted a Farmall F12 with it one time. Yeah. In about a year's time or so, that red was pink. Yeah. He had a pink F12. But anyway, that's that's what, uh, what, the, what the plan is right now. And hopefully uh, have it at March 16th plow day, and hopefully Farm All 51 can come over and video it. It's going to oh, yeah. be a humongous one for plow day. There'll probably be 50 tractors there and five, 600 people. All right. Well, we'll yeah. have to we'll have to come down and see it when you when you're painting, maybe or. Yeah, and it's going to be quite a challenge painting this thing this time because of this time of the year, messing with this thing because of the weather, humidity, and different things. Because all my painting, we we do it right out that door head. Yeah. And I don't know what the weather's going to do. I'm trying to line some people up that can can help me do the sandblast, and they have indoor facilities and paint it. And I'll just bring it back home and, and reassemble it. And of course, the final coat will probably have to be put on here. I could take it somewhere and do it, but because they can break the plows apart. Because I think everybody uh, pointed this out in the video. It's, it's not hard to break them away, but I can have this thing apart in a few minutes. So this this is fast hits right here. I eat fast hitch. All I eat fast hitch. Then I uh, un two quick couplers over there, and that plows off of there. And when you take forty five minutes, hook back up just about as quick. Now I've, I've got a my memory. I mean, I can remember stuff, but sometimes I forget. But did this thing plow? Huh? Did this plow? Did you actually pull this plow? Yeah, I pulled. You the plow. did. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I was yeah. wondering. You know, even yeah. though I pull, pull it with that. Okay. That tractor right there. Yeah. No, no, that thing can't pull it. There's no way, no way. <laughs> well, it did. It did. <laughs> it, it did. did. Okay. It didn't seem to bother it once I got my adjustments right on it and we pulled it about nine inches deep. Yeah. And did not. Oh, no, no, not in, was it, was it Michigan, California, Minnesota, <laughs> all them places? There ain't no way you can plow it there now. Come on well, now. I plowed, well, I plowed in Minnesota. I, let me get the states right. I left that too the other day. I plowed in Minnesota, I plowed in Iowa, Nebraska, uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and of course, North Carolina. Yeah. And I probably forgot a few there. Yeah. Now, South Carolina, I can't remember them all. But um, I, I didn't have any trouble with any of the soils I went to myself too much. Everything went fine. 
So, oh, yeah. But no, as far as pulling that tractor's got plenty of power. It don't it don't bother it one bit. Yeah. You well, might I, you might even notice on the part six yeah. when I decided to go faster, how how quick the response on the motor yeah. was. Well, I noticed the only time you would ever see any black smoke come out of that stack is when it started off. Well, you gonna and see then, it? And once you got to going though, it cleaned up just like a, yeah. any other, you know. The reason for that was is because the turbocharger wasn't spinning fast. Yeah. And when I got first took off, then then built a few RPMs and the turbo picked up and it it, it forces the mayor. I got a yeah. I got a right tough turbo on that tractor. I've yeah. heard I had a lot of people say, well, he must have something under the hood. He must have done some engine work or something. I said, well, yeah, I think you you've had what you said the turbocharger you. Well, um, turbocharger and a few other little things I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> Some IH engineering, huh? Secret stuff. All I know, one time I downloaded that tractor with my other turbocharger, and it was 237 horsepower on the power takeoff track. Yeah. I put this oven on here, and I was told it would probably increase at 15, around 15, maybe 20 horsepower. And it, I, I reckon it does. I really can't tell a whole lot of difference. It don't, whatever, whatever I'm pulling don't seem to bother it either way. Yeah. But that would put me at about 250 horsepower on yeah. the PTO. Probably engine horsepower that we're gonna put you up somewhere between 275 and 300. Yeah. So I've got all the horsepower I need. Yeah. And you got the tires to put it on the ground. You got the tires to get it on the ground, and uh, and I got the horsepower without any additional, maybe a couple hundred extra RPMs, but not much. I, I couldn't see from over here, but I didn't know if there was any uh, oil on there from the from the front end, you know. Oh, the front. <laughs> No, we did not grenade the front end on that tractor. It's doing fine. Okay. All right. Well, sounds like you got everything good and everything's just working. And uh, we're getting there. No, no, we're getting but, there. Nothing but time and money. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll catch you on the next go around. Good part. enough. This will be uh, I guess we could make this part seven. You know, adjustments and well, stuff like whatever that. Whatever, want, whatever you want to do. But anyway, now now the next thing I'm on. I can't get in feel now. It's too wet. I think once we finish our metal work next week. We'll probably work on the afternoons, a couple hours yeah. each afternoon, and get it done in a couple of evenings. And then it's going to be disassembled and uh, headed for the sandblaster. All right. That's all I know to tell you. All right. We'll catch you later. Okay. Later. <laughs>